I finally got a G.I. Joe mauler. Why did I get the mauler? How did I get it? How did I fix it? And was it all worth it? This will all be covered in this video. As a child of the 70s and 80s growing up in the US, I had G.I. Joes. I loved to set up battles. I also loved the cartoon and later on the comic book. But I ended up giving away all my vehicles as a teenager and I sold the rest of my Joes a few years later. The new modern figures, especially the new retro line, has re-sparked my interest in restarting my collection. I'm making these videos to share my experience and share some of the knowledge I gained along the way. So why did I want to get a mauler? Probably the first reason is I never had one as a kid. I did have the Mobat, which was the other motorized tank, but I always thought the mauler looked cooler. Another reason is the mauler just feels like a real tank, it's got tracks, turret, main gun, hatches, but it's also got a lot of realistic details like the antenna, tow cable, armor skirts like an M1 Abrams, grenade launchers for shooting smoke or flares. It also reminded me of the Tamiya model kit for the Merkava, the Israeli main battle tank. There was something about the art on that box that was just amazing, just so realistic and cool looking, and the Merkava was always one of my favorite tanks. After deciding to track down a mauler, I figured there were a few ways I could get one. I could wait and hope it'd be re-released with the retro line, but I didn't really feel like waiting around. I could always go on eBay, but I found the prices of a complete working example prohibitively expensive. But I could also go on eBay and try and get a broken example or one with missing pieces, so that would be much less expensive. I ended up winning this auction. I thought it was a good example because all the big pieces were there, nothing was smashed, and it looked like it just needed a good cleaning. It was missing a door, and also missing all the little bits. But I thought that seemed like a fun kind of project. I was really excited to try to make all those little items, and I could get a new door for just a few bucks. It said it wasn't functioning, but when I looked at the battery box, it just looked like battery corrosion, so I figured the motor and gears were probably alright. It also looked pretty bad, because all the little wheels were broken off on the one side, but I figured I could also remake the piece that held the wheels on, and that would save me some money. Now that I had a mauler in hand, the first step was to disassemble it. You never know what you're going to find inside one of these things. Guns, parts, dead bugs, decades old dried up juice. So then taking the pieces and cleaning them up. I just use soap, water, and an old toothbrush. Just keep it simple. The first thing I wanted to check was if the motor was running, and when I hooked it up to a battery, it ran fine. I needed to replace the contacts for the battery box, so I found an old Hess truck we had that also took D batteries, ripped the contacts out of those, and just soldered them into place. Next was cleaning out the gears, adding some grease, and I found some kind of crazy confetti or something wrapped around the wheels, so I had to pull that off too. The next thing I tackled was the bogey wheel suspension. I had to take some good measurements of the ones that I had that were still functioning, and using the micrometer and just a ruler, you know, just took some measurements, made some notes, did some sketches, and I brought that into 3D. I modeled up what I thought was a pretty good approximation of the real piece. At this point, I had to do a little iteration, printing out a piece, trying it out, making some modifications, printing it again, trying it. I have a nice resin printer, which lets me print pretty accurate pieces, so I don't have to worry about hitting the tolerances I'm trying to achieve. When I finally got a piece that was working, I was really excited, so I just printed out a bunch more, put some spray paint on them, and installed them. The last bits I wanted to hit were the mud guards, the grenade launchers, and the antenna. The challenge in making these bits was that I didn't have any of the actual parts in hand to measure with the micrometer or to just kind of feel in hand and get a sense for the size. So everything I had to do off photographs, a lot of which I found on eBay. And fortunately, a lot of people put rulers next to some of these pieces to show the size. The antenna weren't too hard to design. The grenade launchers were a little tough because they have a weird angle the way they kind of go into the side of the turret, but I ended up being able to match that up. But the most challenging was the mud guards because they kind of have that organic shape on the front of them, which is sort of like a fabric kind of design. To achieve that look like in the toy, I ended up bringing my model into ZBrush, which is a program that lets you model with stuff almost like you're using clay. So that really lets you achieve a really organic, kind of natural feel to stuff. So after some iteration, I had all the pieces done. They looked good. I sprayed them up with some paint, installed them, and pretty much the mauler was done and almost complete. The one piece I didn't make was the tow cable. 
because it's just too long to fit on my printer, which is limited in its size. So eventually I'll make one, maybe when I get a bigger printer or something. So was all this worth it? I think the initial cost of the tank was really good, but I soon found that even adding one replacement piece can add a lot to the overall cost. And getting heavy metal accounted for almost a third of the final budget. But I had to do it. I mean, who else is going to drive this beautiful tank? I also think there are many pros to getting a broken item beyond cost savings. It's just fun to figure out how to fix things. I also get an understanding of how it actually works, and I get to use the skills I have, like my 3D modeling, designing, 3D printing. And also after that, I have no fear of playing with it. Mint toys to me are kind of scary because you're always worried, you know, I'm going to break that really expensive, beautiful mint toy. I always want something with history. It's got some scratches, some dings, some worn paint. And now I know how to fix, repair, and replace any of the parts on my tank down the line. So to sum it up, I loved the final look of the tank. It was really fun and satisfying to do all the fixing and fabrication. And I would totally do it again. And I probably will.